create beautiful compositions with ease. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? In my last video, I showed you a technique to use masks to create beautiful compositions with 100% consistency on the masked object. Now, in this video, I want to show you a technique that is called map bashing. So what kind of problem does this solve and what does map bashing actually mean? Now, the thing here is this is using control net maps. So you're going to extract the control net maps from the images you want to use. And then afterwards, you build a composition out of these control net maps. Now, why would you go that extra step and not just use image to image by just doing photo bashing, which is also something I have showed you on this channel? Well, the benefit here is that a map has removed all of the extra data that a photo has in there. For example, the final details, the exact look of the different elements in the image, the colors that are there, the daylight situation, all these kind of things are in an image. So when you have image to image render, this will be used for the AI image. But if you make a map bashing and you only have, for example, a head map, it only has the outlines, it only has the details in there, but no other information. So when you use that as the input for your AI creation, you have a lot of variety and freedom with your prompting, but still have exactly the composition that you want to create. So let's get started and have a look at the process. The first thing you need here is an idea for a composition. And I can highly advise for you to go to Pinterest and for example, look for concept art or any kind of other art style you want to see. And when we scroll down here, you can see that we have here a lot of different designs, a lot of different ideas of what could be an inspiration for your artwork. Now, the interesting thing here is when you click on one of these images, usually when you scroll down, you have similar images. So you can see we have here kind of a overlord god here. So when we scroll down, we have several of these different god compositions of this very large creature standing in the landscape and other similar designs. So this can be used in a very nice way for giving you ideas, but also on top of that, you can use this to extract elements that you want to use in your composition. For my example, I'm using photos. I'm searching for different elements. So here I have a Greek ruin. Next, I have a woman sitting on the ground. Then I also have a goose spreading her wings. And last but not least, I went to the site Pexels to look for a pillar. And I wanted to have a pillar that is photographed head on, not from below. So here I'm only going to extract this part of the pillar. After you've downloaded the images, you might want to prepare some of them. So here I'm in a software called Affinity Photo, but I can also use GIMP or Photopia as a free website or any other tool you want to use. In this case, because we have a lot of background, I'm simply going to crop the image down to a smaller size because I only want to extract the character of the image. So now export that and save that to your drive. In the next step, we are going to go into automatic 1111. When you scroll down, you can see here we have control net version 1.1. When you click on that, you will see that in the latest update, you have here different quick choose options. So for my choice here, I'm going to use soft edge. When you click on that, this is both loading the preprocessor and also the model for me. Take into consideration that you have a pop down menu here for the preprocess. So here you see different methods to create that and you can see the different qualities, the different results you get from that. Another advice I want to give you is that without pixel perfect, you have a preprocessor resolution down here. So when you set this higher, for example, to 1024, you are getting a higher resolution of your control net map. We don't need any settings or any prompts because at this point we are only going to create a control net map. So click here to load your image. And to get my preview, I have this little explosion icon down here. So click on that. And after a short while, you can see that you get this map here. You can right click on that, save image as. 
So here we have a bigger version of that map. This is the PD net version. And when we compare this to the head map, you can see that in this case for the head map, we have more details in the face. So you need to decide for your process what is important for you. Next, we're going to create a new file. So we go here in Affinity Photo to File and New. I'm setting my resolution in the width to 1536 and in the height to 1024. This resolution is higher than what I'm going to use to render the image, but it also gives me a higher quality of the input map for the preprocessor. First, I want to create a black background here. So I'm going to use here my rectangle tool and I'm going to drag out a rectangle over all of the background. And for the fill color up here, I'm going to select black. Then on the right side here where I have my layers, I'm going to lock that layer so I can't click it by accident. As a next step, I'm going to select all of the maps I want to use in this image. So click and drag this into the canvas. Let's drag this down to the middle and then I'm going to hide everything but the background. I'm going to make the background visible again and then drag it as the lowest layer and I'm going to resize the background so it's going to fill all of my canvas like that. Next, we have the column here. You can see that there's some extra details up here that I don't want to use. And, and also there's a black background around that that I don't want to use. So for that, especially in Affinity Photo, you want to rasterize that layer so it becomes a pixel layer because when you import it, this is starting out as an image layer that can't be edited. Next, I'm going to take my want tool for selection. I'm going to click here on these dark areas I don't want to use and then simply click on delete to remove them. Next, I'm going to use my eraser brush and I'm going to erase the parts up here that I don't need for the column. And now I can move the column around everywhere in the image I want. And this gives me full control over my composition. Next, I'm going to make the layer with the woman visible. Let's drag this atop of the column so you can see it is overlapping the column when I go over it. And first, I'm going to drag this a little bit higher because when we rasterize this, this is rendered as the pixel resolution in the size you see it on your canvas. This is specific to Affinity Photo. We go to right click on that layer and rasterize. Now it is a pixel layer. And again, I can use my eraser tool, hide all of the other layers. So you're seeing what you're working on and the process becomes easier for you. Alternatively, if you want to have a faster process for this, what you can also do here is to use the freehand selection tool and then make a rough selection around the character. So now we have the character selected. You go up here to select and invert pixel selection. Now everything else is selected and hit delete on your keyboard. I'm going to turn on the other layers again. And now I can put my main character on top of the column. So she is sitting here. So next we're going to need the angel wings. In that case, I only want to use the right wing here. So again, I'm using my freehand selection tool or lasso tool. And I'm going to make a rough selection around that wing here like so, so we don't have the background in the image. Don't worry too much about the other details because the AI is going to figure out the rest for you. Now, because we want to use this wing here, I'm going to press Control C, Control V on the keyboard to copy that part into a new layer. Control D to deselect and then hide the layer with the goose. Now you can see we have a wing layer. I need two wings, of course. So on the keyboard, press Control J to duplicate that layer and then go up here to arrange and flip horizontally. So it's going to flip on the other side. Now we're going to select the move tool on the top left and we're going to select both layers and drag it behind our main character. Now I want to resize both of the wings at the same time. But so they keep their ratio, you want to press the shift key at the same time. Now I can move them around side to side on the characters. You can also change the angle of the wings. So you have very much artistic freedom. And of course, what you can now do, select all of the layers for the character, the two wings and the column together 
and press Ctrl G on your keyboard, this will turn all of that into a group. And that means now I can move all of that around to see where I want to have it, or I can also resize all of that together to place it in a position I want to have. Let's go here to File and then Export. And of course, we're gonna export this as a JPEG file. Now I'm going to go back to ControlNet and I'm going to load my image here. On the right side, you see the head map we have created before. Don't worry, this is not going to be used. But because we already have a ControlNet map as an input, you can set the preprocessor to none. And then you have, of course, to choose the model you're using here. So this is a soft edge model. Now here it is also worth to point out that you can actually mix different methods together, but you only should use one method in one control net map. So when you have soft edge, all of the elements in here should be soft edge because you can only select one model you're going to use in one control net. But the thing is, you can use multiple control nets up here. So you can, for example, create one with soft edge just for the main character. And then a second one, for example, with depth layers as the background, for example, for a city. So you can do a lot of different things and combine them and be really creative. Now it is time to set our render settings. Here I'm using Ref Animated, I'm using Clip Skip 2, and I'm using the SDVAE 840,000. Next, let's have a look here at the prompting. I'm using the prompt Beautiful Girl with White Wings, Cute Face, Smiling, Blue Eyes, Sitting on a Broken Greek Pillar, and then with two round brackets, Cross Legged, Crossing Her Legs, and after that, Greek ruins and dramatic clouds in the background. Now below that for my settings, I'm using the sampling method DPM++ 2SA Keras. I'm using 30 sampling steps to give it a little bit more time to think about what I want to create here. And here I'm using a specific trick to give me more quality and also because the image is more complex because of the control net composition. So here I'm turning on a high res fix, but I'm setting it to upscale one. So it's not upscaled at all. And I'm setting it to denoise strength 0.4. What this does is that it first renders the image with the given resolution, and then it renders the image again based on the input with the same resolution. This is kind of like image to image rendering, and it just gives the AI in the second run through more information of what you want to have so you get a better output. Then below that, I have my width at 768, my height at 512. The batch size here is one. And I would suggest to you until you've figured out the prompt to leave it at one. And then after you've figured it out to set the batch size to eight. So you get eight variations of that image and you can choose the best one. I find this is a faster and easier method to get actually good results from your images. The CFG scale here is at seven and the seat is especially if you try to figure out to get a good version is best at random so that you can see the different variations you get in between the images. So here we have the render output of our eight images. And when you enlarge these images, you will see that they are different, of course, in the variations. But also one thing that stands out here is that the face often doesn't look so good. And I would not worry about that because this is going to be fixed in the upscaling. When you found an image you like, click down here on send to image to image. In our image to image settings, you want to scroll down here, you want to set the resolution to twice the size. So in that case, 1536 by 1024. Alternatively, you can also click on the resize by tab and set this here to two. Then for the denoise setting, because I want to fix the face and I want to have a higher quality of my image, I'm going to set the denoise to 0.4. This is going to change the image a little bit, but it's still very consistent with the original. So here you can see our final result. I would say it's pretty beautiful and very detailed. You can also see that the face now looks very nice. And here's an alternative version where I have replaced the background with a forest. And here is another version where I have changed the composition. 
Also here you have a very different design where we have an explorer walking through the mountains and as you can see here I've also rendered this in different versions. So we have one that is playing out as a summer scenario and then we have a second one here with a sunset scenario. For this second composition again I created a map bashing for which I used a landscape image, an image of a castle and an image of a cross country walker. Let me know in the comments what amazing other methods you are using. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah, I wish you a good weekend.